The honorees for Outstanding Animated Film are Branwyn Driscoll.
night. Good evening. I'm Mary Lee Grisanti. I'm the acting chair of Film and Animation, the very proud acting chair. <laughs> I want to welcome all of you, uh, President David Rhodes, Executive Vice President Anthony Rhodes, and our provost, Jeff Neeson and Chris Cyphers. I want to welcome all the teachers, advisors, and staff you are the foundation of absolutely everything that we do. And I want to welcome the families, because without you, none of us would be here. Not only do you support your own young artists with faith and love, and I dare say charity, but you are the ones who have taught these students the most important thing that they have accomplished in their four years, how to be a family with their fellow artists. Welcome, most of all, Class of 2018, you are the ones who have brought us all together tonight to celebrate not only what you have done, but more important, your future. And I really want to say, this class, animators, filmmakers, you are an extraordinary family, and we see it every day, how beautiful you are to each other. This has been a remarkable time of turbulence, triumph, and a real reckoning for this school and for all of us of who we are. As artists and storytellers, teachers and mentors, and as a school, with a mission to nurture the next generation of artists, which is to say a commitment to make a new world, because that's what artists do every day. Yesterday at graduation, I sat through some powerful speeches, especially the one by graduation speaker Maya Lin, who designed the legendary Vietnam Memorial when she was just your age. She was a senior at Yale when she was chosen. I listened as all of you graduates were told by Maya Lin to be fearless, to get involved, to care, to believe that your voice could make a difference. Well, I'm here to say that nobody has to tell the students of SVA Film and Animation how to show up and speak up. Each of you has made a difference in each other's lives, in the department, and in the school. Some of you by speaking out socially, but all of you by being committed to your work, which speaks for you. And your work speaks so eloquently because it speaks the truth. I have never been prouder of the work I have seen, and I've never seen so much fearless, straight-from-the-heart storytelling. I'm going to talk just a little bit about some of the animations and films that I enjoyed most. It's just my personal taste. Everything was gorgeous. So much was moving. These are just a few things that struck me. Um, animations like Amanda Dickman's about what it's like to have attention deficit disorder, discovered when I was in my 40s. And Jonathan Bailey's being rescued from the fear of public speaking by Shakespeare. I love that. And many, many, like Tyler Tamulinus, heartwarming doodle about animation itself and your love and passion for it. I was awestruck by films like Paula Curry Mello's documentary on the very young mothers of the Dominican Republic. And also by Ellie Parker's fictional depiction of the pain and confusion of just being who you are. Jilling Sun's poetry of village life in rural China lingers in my mind, as does Crystal Loyola's harrowing story of a young woman with cancer. And perhaps some of my personal favorites were films about the profound ways that our grandparents touch our lives. Uh, like Isabel Montes' Cuando te vas? And Emily Simonini's Max and Emily. These film reminded us that there is nothing, really nothing, more important or enduring than love. We never write about it that much, but we all want it all the time. Tonight we are doing something special by honoring people who have given us time, talent, patience, inspiration, and insight, 
and done it all out of love. Tonight we are honoring our own faculty by having them present the awards. They are the real stars. I'd like to thank all of those teachers and staff who have worked insanely hard to make tonight possible, especially Joan Brooker and Camille Dobrowolski, Mike Del Vecchio, Vincent, everybody, and our dedicated theater and production staff, and Hila and Mike, who had to step up to do so much more than they ever expected having to do. Thank you, SVA family. I'm really so happy to be a family with you. Thank you, everybody. Now you don't get rid of me that fast because I get to give the first award. Uh, the first award is for human spirit. And that is an award that honors a film that has an extraordinary uh, feel for uh, society, for humanity, for bringing the values of caring and, um, and joy and intelligence to everybody and looking at things in a way that is not just personal, but reaches out. Hello, film. The Human Spirit Award for Film goes to Ignacio Garcia Fry, El Pescador. Shaling Sun, Acre. Shang Shui Chu, ah. Shia Si Yue Kao. Nen Zai Gi Wo Duo Kao Shi Fen Ma. Today, ah, I want to fly to Zhou Shi. Hi, it's not your fault. It's someone who introduced me to a big house. It's enough to pay for the money to get us for a few days. Oh, I'm going to fly. 我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非常厉害的演员，我们的非
He worked at Young and Rubicam as a special effects technician, art director, and writer for most of his professional life. Please welcome Richard Gorey. No worries, no worries. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mary Lee, and welcome. And congratulations to all the filmmakers. It's it's not easy to make a film, so it's a, an accomplishment. It really is, uh, and I uh, congratulate you all. I've been asked this evening to present the Human Spirit Award for Animation, and I'm happy and delighted to do that. When we assign other awards, sometimes those things are a little bit easy to understand what they're for. When you present an award for outstanding achievement in animation, for instance, or outstanding writing, even those among us who don't make films know what that means. Understand that. What does it mean to hand out an award for the human spirit. What is that? It seems kind of obtuse and intangible. Here's what it means to me. The other day, someone who was thinking about sending their son to the School of Visual Arts asked, why, why art school? Why would I do that? It's, the culture is changing. Information is all over the place. What does one get from an art school education? And there are a lot of great answers to that, but one of them is community. You meet people who love the same thing that you do, who are excited and passionate about the things that you love, who will support you, and although in the real world, they are gently your competition eventually. They're also the people who will support you and who will buy you a gin and tonic when you're troubled or who'll tell you what's right or wrong with your film or who will hold up a standard against which your work should be measured. That's what it should be. And if you can find a way to love filmmaking and animation but also reach people about animation or filmmaking, that's a really wonderful thing. And I think that comes from understanding what community really is. It's not simply about drawing pretty pictures, it's about communicating with people and helping them to understand themselves better, to tell a story that people, even who, people who don't understand film or animation, can respond to and be moved and, and uh, deeply inspired by. Here is the winner of the Human Spirit Award for Animation this evening. The Human Spirit Award for Animation goes to Lydia Fama, Long Distance Train. Hear that? Where did that... These tracks have been abandoned for decades. I know. I've been stuck on them for decades. Is that... real? I don't think I've ever seen another ghost. Let alone, uh, ghost train? <gasps> Lydia, you are my queen. This is for you. You deserve it. You. You're very welcome. Uh, I, I think I cheated because there's a literal human spirit in my film. But <laughs> thank you to all of my mentors and friends at SVA. Um, thank you to Healy's Inc., the creator of the shoes Healy's, for inspiring my film. That's a joke. <laughs> thank you to my fiance, Meg, for actually inspiring the film and for inspiring me every day for the past five years. Congrats to everyone. Thank you. I'm going to turn the microphone back over to Mary Lee again. She's going to come back and introduce the next award. Good night, everybody, and congratulations. Our next award is uh, presented by Nywift and the Hafong Foundation. Would you like to come up, ladies? We can be here while we're here. This is Simone Perry, who's the new president of NIWIFT, and Ha Fong, who in, oh, is that okay? They're good. Uh, um, is a Vietnamese singer, actress, and producer, uh, and has just recently starred in Finding Julia, which is uh, a very emotional film directed by one of my favorite directors, <laughs> Igor Sunar. And uh, Simone uh, Perry is also a, uh, producer who has um, currently is working with one of our favorite people, Jennifer Fox, who is, uh, many of the, our writers know, and who produced The Tale, which is going to come out on HBO, which uh, some of you may know is a, based on the true story of uh, Jennifer's experience as a young woman uh, being abused. So I'm going to let these ladies tell you all about it. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. I need to put some glasses on, potentially. Um, 
So uh, thank you, Mary Lee, my fellow NYWIFT member sister. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, on behalf of New York Women in Film and Television, I am delighted to present this award tonight. Uh, NYWIFT appreciates our long uh, collaboration with SVA, and not only for the Dusty Awards, but throughout the year. Uh, we do many programs with School of Visual Arts, so we're quite excited to be here in this capacity. Um, for those of you who don't know us, NYWIFT is a professional association of women and men uh, in the film, television, and digital med media fields. We have um, nearly 2,500 members across New York City, uh, and we're part of a network of 50 women in film chapters with 15,000 members worldwide. Um, NYWIFT produces uh, programs. We uh, provide professional development, networking opportunities, grants, and scholarships. We advocate for equality for women in the business. We preserve women's films, and we celebrate women's achievements. Um, and an important part of our mandate is to help young women uh, get into the business. Um, and we know more than ever now is quite important for young women to have a chance to succeed in film, television, and digital media. And the closer we come to creating this uh, industry where women have equal opportunity, recognition, and compensation, uh, the better we all are as an industry, in our opinion. Um, and so in addition to our regular membership, we have a special category of membership called the Next Wave Group for young women who are in the field. So check us out, nywif.org. And I bet we have some future NYWIF members and Next Wave members here. Um, and so we're thrilled uh, to be here tonight um, to partner with actress, singer, and philanthropist Hao Fong and her HP Foundation, um, whose generous contribution allows NYWIF to give not one, but two awards this year. Um, the HP Foundation is one of the largest of its kind and is the culmination of NYWIF member Ha Fong's passion for music and her fierce devotion to supporting young people's causes. I'm so pleased that Ha Fong can join us today. Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm very happy to partner with uh, New York WIF, and congratulations. So without further ado, here are the winners of the Ho Fung New York Women in Film and Television Scholarship. The Ho Fung and NYWIFT Scholarship goes to Emily Simonini, Max and Emily. My great-grandparents both passed away when I was very young, so my memories of them are vague. But for as long as I can remember, my family kept them alive by telling the stories of their immigration over and over again. My favorite story of all is about the mountain that separated their two small towns in Germany. Kira Klein's Do or Dare. Are you backing down from a challenge? Psh, well, we could stay and uh, you can tell me who you like instead. Whatever, why can't I just buy you the soda? It's funnier this way. But, uh, if you can't manage this, I guess that means you... lose? Emily and Kira. I just want to start this off by saying this means the world to me because Kira was my sweet mate freshman year and we've been together this the past four years and I love her so dearly. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Um, I just want to thank my amazing friends and my beautiful family for letting me tell their story, um, exposing them to the whole world. Um, I want to dedicate this to Joan Brooker, who's been there with me the whole step of the way, and my beautiful mom and my beautiful parents and siblings. 
um, as well as my great grandpa Max and Emily. Of course, she was a strong woman, inspired me to do so much, and I dedicate this also to every strong woman who's here tonight. So, thank you. Wow, I, uh, I really don't know what to say. I was not expecting this. Um, I also want to thank Emily so much because I would not be where I am today without her and like her inspiring me. Um, I want to thank everyone who helped me with the film and helped me believe in me and helped me to believe in myself. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. All right, you're almost finished with me for the evening. Um, our next award is uh, from the IFP, and that is the Inter excuse me, the Independent Film Project. And here to uh, present it is Program Manager Zach Mandinak. And these are the people who do the most for young independent filmmakers ever. Come on inside. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, congratulations to all of you. It's always so great to be here. The work's always so damn good. It's always so inspiring just to sit here and watch you guys work. Um, to tell you a bit about IFP, um, we, back in 1979, uh, a handful of people in the American independent film landscape uh, put on a six film program as a sidebar at the New York Film Festival up at Lincoln Center to kind of show people what's going on in the independent film landscape. So not you know, capital A auteurs and not Hollywood, kind of lower scale, more humanistic, more personal, uh, left of center work. Uh, and over the past almost 40 years, that organization has blossomed and bloomed into a full time year round organization supporting independent storytellers across multiple mediums, not just film, but also in TV uh, and in audio as well, uh, in new mediums. Uh, and so I'm always thrilled to be here to present the IFP award. Um, we have, we're a membership-based organization, and so the winner of this award gets a complimentary membership to IFP, uh, which not only allows you to apply to our year-round programs, which support all of these different storytellers and artists, um, but also allows you to be a part of a community, which I feel like you're in this kind of beautiful cocoon in school, I remember it, uh, and then you kind of go out into the world and you're like, where are my, where are my people? Um, and hopefully uh, the community at IFP, uh, through our different events, uh, screenings, mixers that happen year round over in, in Brooklyn, in Dumbo, not too far away, um, helps you kind of feel like you have, have your people still around you. Um, so without further ado, uh, the IFP award winner is... The IFP award goes to... Alex Alviar, Tierra. Come on down, Alex. <laughs> wow, thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone who supported me to make this happen. Um, who everyone who felt that it was important to talk about the struggles of women in war zones. Um, thank you to Joan, to Ed. Uh, thank you to my crew in Colombia, to Bella. Uh, gracias, ma. Gracias, abuelita. Thank you so much. <laughs> what happens when you can't afford a, a master of ceremonies. You can only afford me. Um, 
This next award is a very special award, and I would be making James Grimaldi give it, except he broke his ankle. So, <laughs> I mean, present it. So, uh, actually, it will be, uh, it's the Saikasa Award for Animation Screenwriting. And it's a generous award from the Kripalani family. Kripalani, that's right. And uh, to present it is Yula, Yulia, who is a 217 graduate of a competing film school, um, where she received multiple awards and acknowledgments. And uh, she has, is interested in writing and directing comedy. And is, I just have to read what James sent me. Sorry. Yulia and Sushil Kirpalani met in night school at SVA in the animation screenwriting class taught by James Grimaldi. That's where they fell in love with the medium of animation screenwriting. And for the next six years, Yulia took Grimaldi's class six times. <laughs> and so this is someone who really values animation screenwriting, and the award is now in its second year. Now to present it, Yulia. Sorry, I'm just going to adjust my skirt so it's all proper. Um, uh, Sushil could not be here uh, today. Um, he is at work making money, so we can keep giving this award to all of you people. Um, uh, thank you so much, James, for uh, being such an amazing teacher. And I'm sure everyone who had James uh, can testify to that. And uh, it's uh, so awesome to read screenplays that people write in your class. Um, every year. And uh, since I did not prepare any speech, uh, I want to be my favorite kind of um, presenter. Uh, I'm going to be very uh, short. So the award uh, goes to Zen Y Ma. She, she doesn't get the thingy, but she gets the money. Um, hi, I want to thank my dad for supporting me and um, throwing money into things that I want to do, and James for Grimaldi, sorry, for teaching me everything that I know about stories and screenwriting and, um, and storytelling and being kind and humane and other people and my life and life and patterns of universe and stuff. <laughs>
They nourish the mind and the soul. They are what give meaning to our lives. Although both senses seem to be equally vital to our existence, it is hearing the world around us, and as any great filmmaker knows, that shapes the character of the visuals. Would you agree that uh, we experience seeing as outside of ourselves, as separate than ourselves, but we experience sound from within? Sound is the bridge between these two worlds. It can enrich our lives and uplift us to experiences that ultimately balance the sometimes dreariness and struggle of everyday life. Society is continuously subjected not only to bad sound quality, but more importantly to sound recordings in which the most vitally expressive aspects of sound are mutilated. That was a joke. Capturing a good recording and becoming experienced in editing and mixing each sound is critically important to the final outcome of the film. It is through the expressive qualities of dialogue, sound effects, and music that we, the audience, can experience and become familiar with the higher qualities of life to which we all naturally aspire. Ultimately, listening to the world, listening to each other, going inside and listening to ourselves, that's where it begins. The path to becoming a great sound designer, they must first become a great listener. Here are the winners of the Gotham Sound Honorary Grant. The Gotham Honorary Sound Grant goes to Paul Mouncey, so what were you doing sitting on the curb? Oh, uh, I don't have a car, so. Can't you just sit inside? Yeah, but you know, it's, it's really nice out. So uh, what, what do you do? I'm a cook. Wow, cool. And you're, and you're eating McDonald's. I happen to like McDonald's. And you Yuan Choi. want to, Yuhan's clip is so much more impressive than mine. Um, I just want to thank all the directors who had me work on their films and for putting up with me and my parents. Um, and to Chris Newman, who I guess isn't here, um, but he's very valuable to me and was um, a great teacher. So, thank you. Hello. Um, sorry if I look rude with my sunglasses. I recently got into an accident, so to prevent my panic attack, I have to wear this. Um, thanks to my friends, all my friends in SVA, and thanks to my family uh, who actually went back to Korea um, for, because they had to go to work, but yeah. Um, and yeah, thanks to everybody who, who I got involved in and who I encountered. And um, I'm very proud to become the first Korean, South Korean um, to get this award in the CSV Film Festival. Thank you so much.
Our next presenter needs no introduction. Oh wait, yes he does. Disney animator, illustrator, and New York Yankees fanatic, Mario Menjivar. Hello. Um, legendary Disney animator, Glenn King, uh, once said, skill is learned, but to animate from the heart takes courage. Courage is what everyone or every young character animator in this room has demonstrated. The courage to animate a character is the courage to take your feelings, your life experience, your observations, and create being capable of carrying those emotions. To animate by not just moving a bunch of drawings, but also moving an audience. And in the end, the magic is the courage to make people believe in your character so much that they want to follow them in their journey. Uh, tonight we honor and thank you for sharing this courage with us. Here are the honorees for outstanding achievement and character animation. The honorees for outstanding achievement in character animation are Andres Padilla, Slides. I should really go home. I've recently been orphaned. I know, I know. We're all destined to be orphaned at some point in our lives. But at eight years old? Shoot, I think that's too soon. Being an orphan sure is troublesome. But that ain't what's <coughs> bothering me. Sonia von Merensdorf, Crow. Casey Villalba, Doll's House. And the award goes to Ben Lucas. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm full of adrenaline and anxiety. Uh, Wow, thank you, thank you a lot. Uh, thank you to my mama and my papa who aren't here, my sister, uh, my girlfriend Alexis. Uh, thank you Alpardo, Mark, Sam, and Gabby, without you guys, oh, nothing to be done. Frank Gresham, uh, and a special thank you to Sonia and for Chris for always being there for me, uh, and everybody else at the animation department. Oh, I love you all, thank you. The next award will be presented by Don Pointer. After a long career in animation, a variety of disciplines, Don has taught in the film and animation departments since 2001. He received his MFA from the SVA Computer Arts Program in 2012. He teaches a number of subjects, including visual development. Please welcome to the stage, Don Pointer. Good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, congratulations to the entire class uh, for making it through four years. 
Um, I'm here to give the Production Design Award. Uh, the production designer is the person responsible for the overall visual quality of a film. Uh, in animation, the production designer has to think like a cinematographer, a set builder, and an animator. Good production design demands imagination and superior craft. It requires the ability to research, to analyze, and to synthesize. It allows directors to direct, storyboarders to board, and animators to animate with confidence. It starts telling the story before the words are spoken or the characters move. In short, good production design supports the goals of the filmmaker. It lets the audience believe in the world they're witnessing, and we're here to honor that achievement. Here are the honorees for Outstanding Achievement in Animation Production Design. The honorees for Outstanding Achievement in Animation Production Design are Jackie Snyder, Moth's Cafe. On the back of a deer, I saw everything. Okay, thank you, Tick. Next up, we have a song from, uh... Hey, Kat, you don't have to. I think you got this, though, yeah? Next up, Caterpillar! Casey Villalba, Doll's House. Ethan Menegakis, Cosmic Melody Overdrive. Hey, ah. you! Whoa, take it easy, man. I'm just excited to see you is all. This place is like, deserted. And the Dusty goes to Jackie Snyder for Ma's Cafe. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's all yours. Gotcha. Hi, everybody. Uh, Thank you very much. It's very nice of you all to be here tonight. And um, thank you for the award. And I I'd like to thank um, my family, my mom and dad and Maeve. And I'd like to thank uh, Mark and Sam and Gabby for making it so much fun to go, go to the school and to work at the school. <laughs> and thank you very much to all of my friends. And there's so many other people I'd like to thank. Oh, I want to thank the Ghost Scouts. And I want to thank everybody here. This is great. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks! All right. Uh, the next award will be presented by Camille Dobrobowski. A celebrated editor, guru of all things post-production, Camille has been teaching courses at SVA for the past 10 years, as well as providing tools and services to help students as the post-production manager. Over the years, Camille has edited both narrative and documentary films, including Larry Flint, The Right to Be Left Alone, and his featured directorial debut, The Journey Home. Please welcome to the stage, Camille Dobrowski. Thank you, Don. Hey, guys. So editors have 24 choices every second to make the, be to make the perfect cut. During that time, they are doing their best to make the most emotional edit, to move the story forward, so while showcasing the best dialogue, cinematography, the actor's performance, and the director's vision, all while, for the most part, trying to stay invisible. Well, I think tonight they deserve some, some time in the spotlight. This year, I've seen many of our editors form amazing collaborations, battle through technical issues, uh, fight for access for their favorite editing stations, 
This would be Emily at Station 11, I believe, is yours. And uh, Paul Monsi logged on in five machines at all times, just to make sure he can, he has, he can cut. Um, and of course, the exhausting all-nighters at the end of April that you guys all suffered and, and made it through. Um, I think a few, a few of you guys actually may, may, may have spent more time in the editing lab this year than I have. Um, I'm really proud of all you guys and how you united together to get your films complete before the deadline. And I think all of you guys deserve a round of applause for your efforts. I also want to uh, thank my student workers, uh, Henry, Francesca, Julia, Isabel, and especially Ashley for being there for the season students through uh, thick and thin to get you guys, get your files exported properly and delivered by the deadline that we pushed a few weeks ago. Um, now let's cut to the chase and here are the honorees for outstanding achievement in editing. The honorees for outstanding achievement in editing are Sitting Young and Crystal Loyola, Blue Reverie. Duck Kim, sink deep. <laughs> Alex Alviar, Tierra. Theo the sword. How long can you hold your breath? Okay, and the award goes to Key Duck Sink Deep. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to thank my family, uh, who's probably watching this through live stream, um, and my good friends in Korea, and even the States. I love you, everyone. Um, and I would like to thank my amazing crew who made this happen. Um, Ding, Leo, Sue, um, Alex, Suki. There's so many people I need to thank, but a um, uh, special thanks to the NIO Tish underwater shoe crew. Um, due to them, I was able to get uh, an amazing picture. Um, and I would like to thank my advisor, Chris Newman, who is not here, but a uh, uh, very big thanks to you. Uh, and uh, I would like to mention that I am quite proud of getting this award for three different reasons. It's, um, first is that I'm proud of myself as an um, artist, to be more specific, director, editor, um, who was able to achieve this award. Um, secondly, I am proud as a son to my parents that um, I am a son that is able to uh, make them proud. And finally, um, well, it seems like Koreans are getting a lot of these awards today, but uh, yes, I'm proud to be one of the first Koreans to uh, achieve this award. Thank you very much.
Now I'd like to introduce award-winning director, cinematographer, and faculty member, Dayan Georgievich, ASC. Dayan is a national executive board member of the International Cinematographer Guild Local 600, IATSE, and member of the American Society of Cinematographers and Directors Guild of America. Dayan? First off, I'd like to congratulate uh, the class of 2018, and of course, let's not forget your families and and um, and, fa and faculty. Bravo, <laughs> bravo. Yeah. Uh, you know, taped on my uh, desktop monitor uh, is a, a fortune cookie message that I salvaged from a recent dinner at a nearby uh, Chinese restaurant here on Ninth Avenue. And I, I find it apropos, uh, no matter you know, whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out in the film business, it reads as following. A calm sea does not make a skilled sailor. A calm sea does not make a skilled sailor. That's good advice. Bring it on. That's right. The bigger the wave, the better. For without me meaningful struggle and taking risks, you'll never grow. If you keep playing it safe, staying in your familiar comfort zone, you'll never expand your awareness and craft to higher heights. So what if you make a mistake? But I guarantee you'll be that much better and wiser the next time. I'm reminded of a quote from Orson Welles. There's no fairness in the world. There's just good luck and bad luck. But if you cultivate what I call the three C's, the combination of confidence, craft, and compassion, then for some reason you tend to get lucky. Make it your business to shoot anything as much as possible because those long hours of practice and work experience form the foundation of your confidence. Never stop learning your craft. Never lose your curiosity. You should know that filmmaking, like art, expresses how we feel, what we know, our dreams, and our opinions crafted using visual grammar as a painter dips into a palette. As for compassion, the great poet Maya Angelou once said, the thing to do, it seems to me, is to prepare yourself so you can be a rainbow in somebody else's cloud. Somebody who may not look like you, may not call God the same name you call God, if they call God at all. I may not dance your dances or speak your language, but be a blessing to somebody. That's what I think. So please continue to help each other, inspire each other, protect each other, be a blessing for each other. Please advocate for those things that matter to you for the better. So, here are the honorees for Outstanding Achievement in Cinematography. The honorees for Outstanding Achievement in Cinematography are Alex Alviar, Tierra. Ding Ting Zhang, Sink Deep. Emanuela Zakariu, Memoriam.
And the award goes to Emanuela Zachariou. <laughs> Um, thank you. This means a lot, um, especially being a female cinematographer, and it's not every day that female DPs win awards. Um, this film I actually directed too, and it's the first uh, narrative film that I've directed, and first narrative film I've shot. So it's been a crazy year, but I'd like to thank um, the SVA Film Department for being so supportive. My cast and crew, we shot this in minus freezing temperatures during that blizzard in January. My amazing parents for always being there for me and encouraging me. Um, my boyfriend, Devin, who's been supportive, and he wrote the film for me, and he's just been so supportive along the whole way. Uh, Joan Brooker, Dayon Georgievich, and Mary Lee. Thank you. Okay, our next pre uh, presenter uh, is Christine Repkin. Uh, she has been instructing uh, bright young aspiring artists in the areas of fine art, cartooning, and traditional and digital animation methods since 2007. A proud alumnus of SVA, uh, Christine also holds a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Traditional Animation with the graduating class of 2006, and a Master's in Art Education from Adelphi in 2011, and has worked in various prestigious art institutions. She is delighted to be presenting the award for Best Script Writing and Animation for this year's awards ceremony. Christine. Hi, everyone. Uh, first, I will say that SVA as an institution uh, is a uh, wonderfully open creative atmosphere that I con uh, personally, to consider, personally consider to be a place of deep growth and awareness of one's own artistic voice. I hope that you have cherished your interactions with my acclaimed and knowledgeable colleagues as much as I have. May you find many opportunities to present your individual and collective voices to those whom it will inspire. To the students, I would like to congratulate you all on finishing your films after more than a year of brainstorming, development, tireless late nights, um, hard times, and hopeful dreams of the future. Keep in mind that all of this backbreaking experience is all for the better to show resilience in the face of an increasingly competitive industry, but one that is, in the end, worth it. Um, <clears throat> Finally, one last bit of advice. Don't ever stop creating. Continue to nurture your most innovative and enduring ideas through your writing. Uh, <clears throat> Remember to keep pushing yourselves to think outside your comfort zone and explore the possibilities of animated filmmaking through research, discovery, and experimentation. Always keep your mind open to developing new ways to tell stories that make people laugh, cry, and express the depth of the human condition. Uh, without further ado, uh, here's the winner for the Special Jury Award for Writing in Animation. The Special Jury Award for Writing and Animation goes to Andres Padilla, Slides. Mm, these two. This one, when I was a stubborn teenager and didn't listen to any other music that wasn't emo. And this one, when I was a kid and I was obsessed with this toy I had. What about you? Um, this one is when I was obsessed with having pigtails and this one from when I was a stubborn teen in the debate club. Wow, you were very confrontational when you were growing up. Confrontational? Me? You were confrontational. Yeah, you were. You're being it right now. No, you are. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, 
Hi. Oh. Um, I want to thank my family, my friends. Um, I also want to thank uh, Fon, Francesca, uh, Chini, Martin, everyone that worked in my film, Daniel also. Uh, and yeah, I kind of. Yeah, I kind of want to break this and give like a little piece to each one of you. And thank you. Yeah. Um, the next presenter needs no introduction. Um, uh, the, he is a New York City-based animator and SVA instructor, uh, Frank Gresham. <laughs> Frank Gresham has been designing, directing, and supervising animated television productions here and abroad for over 30 years. So. I know we're almost through the gate, that big golden gate, guys, but can we talk one more time about all-nighters? <laughs> when, uh, when I was an undergrad, I went to a huge state school down south that had, um, it was so big that not only did it have an art school and a science school and a business school, it had a med school attached to it. And it was a pretty prominent med school it wasn't long into my uh, tenure there as an undergraduate that I found myself pulling all-nighters. And what I began to realize is that all-nighters were pulled by not everybody at school, but by just by a few subgroups. There were us artists, and then there were the med school students. <laughs> and at one, uh, given the fact that I was working so hard, I rarely had time for uh, fun, but at one, you know, uh, residence hall mixer, one particular med student, because we all lived in this, you know, these halls together, med students, art students, etc. One med school guy saddles up next to me and goes in this kind of douchey way. He's <laughs> like, so I, I don't get it. You know, uh, we med school students, we do all-nighters because, you know, people's lives are on the line. But what, why do you artists do it? And I wanted so badly to say something really profound about <laughs> vision and obsession and drive. But the only thing that came out of my mouth was this incredible double negative. And I said, we, we can't not do what it is that we love to do. We can't not make art. And, you know, as I look around at you guys, um, I see that that's still very much in evidence, and I'm really happy for that. The fact that nothing can stop you guys and us from making art. Um, so here we are. We're at this place where we, we're here because we can't not be here. Our families have sacrificed for us. We've sacrificed, and it's because we can't not be here. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm, this is more for the parents and your friends and your well-wishers who are here with you to give them some insight into what, what, why you're here and why your work is up on this screen. So given the fact that we're finally at this exalted place where the work is done and the gr degree congratulations, has now been conferred. What brings us here? We're here because we've got talent. We're here because we've got vision. We're here because we've got creativity. We're here because we've got obsession. And we're here because we've got discipline. For the, those of you guys who are graduating this week, and have your work up here tonight, I don't need to tell you what discipline is. Uh, again, this is for your well-wishers and your family and friends who may not quite understand what you guys have been through. 
So to give you, you all some idea, I'm going to pull up another analogy. When I was a kid, my mother took me to my first uh, ballet performance. And I was really impressed, and it was beautiful. And as I was watching the dancers, in one particularly beautiful moment, movement, I was just really taken aback. It was so breathtaking. My mother kind of saddles up next to me and goes, they're in absolute agony now. <laughs> and so I'm told it's true. So what does discipline feel like? For those of you guys who don't know what discipline really means as it applies to art students, discipline, discipline can feel like agony. It can feel like deprivation. It can feel like, and here's that word that I'm told that millennials know all about, FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> discipline is all about missing out. You guys know what I'm talking about. So that's what discipline feels like. What, is, what, is, what does discipline look like? It's beautiful. So with that, here is the winner of the special jury award for experimental technique in animation. The Special Jury Award for Experimental Technique in Animation goes to Danny Dueck Porcelana. Come on up here, my darling. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. I well, I dressed for the occasion, but I, I didn't like <laughs> prepare any speech. I just want to say thank you, especially for my dad. Um, if it wasn't for him and like um, his support, like I could never be here. Um, thanks, my sister and my best friend Anna, who's here too. Uh, thanks, Frank, Carl, and Camille also. Um, thank you, everyone. So happy for Danny. Our next speakers really need no introduction to anybody who is in the animation department. They are some of, and I would say, the most beloved staff at SVA, knowing that they have lots of contenders and lots of close seconds. Every day they work tirelessly to ensure that every need of the animation student is met maintaining our state-of-the-art facilities, and connecting the finest representatives in the industry directly to the students. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. Please welcome to the stage Mark Minnick and Sam Lee. Hey, uh, congratulations. Um, Gabby can't be here, but she sends her love and Congrats and all that fun stuff. But um, yeah, so I'm going to keep it as short as Frank was long. <laughs> um, 
So we're going to get right to it. But but you guys did a great job this year. Um, it was nice being with people from outside the school, watching your work, and so impressed with everything that you do and making it a really hard decision. So congrats. And Sam. Oh, I don't really have any <laughs> I guess I guess I'll um, get to it. Uh, here are the honorees for outstanding animated film. The honorees for outstanding animated film are Branwyn Driscoll, Cadence. Please don't misinterpret my anger as anything other than passion. The work I did matters. The work we do matters. Whether or not you agree with the fight are only war criminals or politicians who know that a country in constant war is a country that you can control. And we've been in a perpetual state of war since 2001. Ben Lucas, I should really go home. Walter, steer clear, child services. Wolsey, the city. So, what, what exactly are you planning on doing to that nasty so-and-so? Oh, well, I'm gonna tussle him up. Sonia von Marensdorf, Crow. And the award goes to Sonia von Marensdorf and Branwyn Driscoll. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that was a tie. Bram, Bram, oh, yeah, it's, it's Sonia and Branwyn, if you're here. <laughs> I'm so glad it's a tie. <laughs> um, um, I guess there's just three groups of people I wanted to talk about tonight, and the um, first one is my peers and instruct instructors that I wouldn't be half the artist and animator that I am right now without them, um, namely Al Pardo, my advisor, and Frank Grisham, who taught me everything that I know about storyboarding and helped me find my passion and what I want to do in this industry. Um, uh, the second group, is of course Mark, Sam, and Gabby <laughs> for being just the people who will help you through any obstacle you could possibly face at this school and for being amazing mentors and friends. Um, and then the last group is of course like all of my friends and my loved ones and especially my mom and my dad who are here tonight and my brother who couldn't be um, because I made every frame of it for you. So I love you. <laughs> Uh, I just want to say thank you to friends and family, particularly uh, Frank, who helped me throughout the entire film, and uh, Demi Bozas, who gave me amazing direction. So. So James Grimaldi has already been spoken about as an amazing teacher, so I'm lucky to be able to introduce, bring James up. Um, James has worked at Disney as a screenwriter, 20th Century Fox developing fe feature films, and has won 27 awards for his screenplays. He's most re recently finished writing a screenplay, a screenwriting textbook. James loves teaching SVA, of course. Um, his students and their stories mean the world to him. Come on up, James.
Thank you. I just got these yesterday. Um, I'm presenting the award for screenwriting, and what I'd like to say is, more than ever, what I hear from film studios and film executives is that we need stories that increase empathy. Empathy in this country at this time is crucial. A great screenwriter does just that. She creates empathy for a protagonist. She makes us care for that character. She puts us in their shoes so that we feel what they go through, explores their relationships, and makes those relationships so emotional that we end up crying or laughing or screaming with terror and anger. And when we finish experiencing that screenplay in a film, we feel like we went through it ourselves and we change, and we feel inspired to tackle life. And we look around us, and we suddenly have new empathy for others. And that is what the screenwriter who is going to win has achieved. And the award for Outstanding Achievement in Screenwriting goes to Mina Elwell. for her script, Hellicious. <sighs> All I can tell you is um, Mina wrote an amazing TV show called Hellicious and created great empathy for an eight-year-old girl who is a grim reaper and has a family, which is Satan and demons. And as you can imagine, it create, uh, you have to have a lot of talent and dedication to create empathy for a grim reaper. So um, congratulations, Mina. I hope you're watching. <laughs> um. Next, uh, I am presenting the next uh, presenter, director, producer, and screenwriter, George Lavu, <laughs> was the force as co-screenwriter and producer that got the groundbreaking film Real Women Have Curves off the ground. Re-evaluating Real Women this year, the New York Times called the film a classic and the Museum of Modern Art has requested a 35 millimeter print of the film for their archives. George most recently directed a micro-budget feature film called Juvie, and also directed a seven-part web series about the immigrant experience for the city of New York called We Speak New York. Thank you very much. So we're getting to the end of the evening here, winding up, and um, you already have had your commencement. So I thought take just a minute as you're getting into this transition of like, what has your tuition bought you? What, what did you get? You got an education, craft, and, and I think what you really got is you got everyone in this room. Really, you know, all those other things, the craft, education, that's fantastic, but most profound is all of us. You have us to turn to, the faculty. You have all of you to turn to. You're going to leave the building, but you're not going to leave the community. You're going to have each other. That's going to be the most valuable thing that you're going to have going forward. Because from now on, you are going forward into your careers, into your life, into being an artist. So just think of, think of that, think of how important that is that you stay connected, stay, stay in touch with each other 
and realize that you have us to come back to to the faculty through email. Ten years from now, you may email us and say, hey, I wrote a new script or I need some advice. Or you may email one of your other you know, favorite faculty people. So, so think about that moving forward and what you all mean to each other, which we've been hearing so much tonight. So think of that. All right. So now, here are the honorees for Outstanding Achievement in Directing. The honorees for Outstanding Achievement in Directing are Theo Lasord. How long can you hold your breath? Hello. Sun Wu Park, Wu Minghua. How do you know him? He's an actor. No, no, he's a light artist. The light artist is used to light up the stage. Light up the stage. Light up the stage. Make the actors look like a bright, shining professional. Alex DeMarco, Runoff. Corin Mikalski, Poncho. You're already there? No, 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 I'm, I'm coming. I must have the wrong time. 30 minutes tops. Family, thank you, my friends. Wow. It was so hard to try not to expect the award, but oh, thank you. And now I'm the third Korean Dusty Award winner. Thank you. And, and maybe uh, I'm the first Korean who speaks in Korean in Dusty because my parents' English is very worse than mine. So could you just give me, yeah. Oh, 엄마 아빠 감사합니다. 이 모든 영광을 저희 부모님께 드리겠습니다. Thank you so much. All right, our next presenter, a former actress and television writer, Joan Marker Brooks, is a director of five award-winning documentaries that have both been broadcast and screened in festivals throughout the world. She is currently filming her most recent documentary, Figure Works. Please welcome to the stage, Joan Marker Brooks. I'm Joan Brooker Marks. I'm not a marker, George. Hard to believe I've taught with him for 12 years every Thursday morning, 9 to 12. Uh, congratulations, all you graduates, and a special welcome and thank you to your parents, your wonderful parents. I want to make particular note of our extraordinary women in this department who have demonstrated consistent excellence, excellence for the last four years. You persisted. That's right, and I have no doubt that you will continue that in your coming careers <clears throat> and the rest of your life, hopefully. Uh, documentary filmmaking, of course, is very near and dear to my heart, and I believe one of the most honorable ways to tell stories. Uh, in the film department, we are few but mighty. Um, tonight, we are awarding two documentarians. The first is a special jury award, and um, I've been allowed to say the name before the clip, um, because this woman and her cinematographer are very important people in my life. It is a special jury award for outstanding social documentary. Congratulations, Paula. Let's look at the clip. The special jury award for social documentary goes to Paula Curry Mello, Adrift. Si seguimos promoviendo la mujer como una cosa, una cosa tú no la respetas. Una cosa es esta chancleta. 
Entonces, si las mujeres somos cosas, tú la puedes tirar, tú la puedes matar, votar. Eso promueve machismo, violencia, feminicidio y todo lo que estamos viviendo. La mujer es libre de su cuerpo y debe ser respetado su cuerpo. Thank you so much to my family who's here with me. Um, thank you to my boyfriend and cinematographer of the film, Alejandro. Thank you to Paul. Thank you to everyone at SVA who helped me make this film. My only wish with this documentary is that it can make a positive change in the Dominican Republic and that one day women's rights and human rights will finally be treated with the respect that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you. And our second, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. Uh, our second award is for outstanding documentary. Um, and here are the two nominees. The honorees for Outstanding Documentary are Shelby Hoogie, Bread Machine. Shut the door behind you. Do you, need, do you want a beverage of some sort? Um, I have carbonated water. I'm actually good. Do you guys want water? I'm happy. I have Irish whiskey. <laughs> That could be it. Yeah, no, no, now you're talking. A little early in the day, but it's it's past noon, and we know that somewhere on the globe it is five o'clock. It's five o'clock. <laughs> Emily Simonini, Max, and Emily. My grandmother did all the cooking. My grandfather did all the cleaning. And uh, he used to say, well, you know, I have arthritis, so I need to do the dishes. But really, I think he just knew that my grandmother worked really hard, and he wanted to do his part. My mother never forgot about my father's favorite dishes. And my father never forgot the flowers. And the award goes to Shelby Hoogie. I, first, I want to say that I'm honored to share the nomination with Emily. Um, she's been sort of my twin that I just discovered this year, and um, people confuse us all the time. Uh, we're our, the two duck girls, um, and I'm very proud of her. I just wanted to say that. Um, but I want to thank you know my family, Tyler, all of the people who let me just endlessly ramble or babble or I don't know all the things that I'm doing right now. Um, but I really want to thank Joan, Camille, Tian for being my SVA mom. And I want to thank all the incredible women who've surrounded me in this process, Karen and Julia, for doing this with me and being my two-woman crew in it. And I'm so proud of you guys, and I'm so grateful. And um, thank you so much. <laughs> Excuse me again. Um, I'm really delighted to be introducing the next person who is, <clears throat> excuse me, also very near and dear to my heart and one of my best friends, Ed Bowes, who is our master production teacher, editing teacher, and an extraordinary filmmaker in his own right. He's also the recent recipient of a Guggenheim Fellowship, grants from the Rockefeller Foundation and National Endowments for the Art. 
among others. <clears throat> and a few years ago was named the Outstanding Artist at SVA uh, School of Visual Arts. Uh, Ed has recently finished his 17th movie entitled Seahorse Powder Room and will be working on his 18th this summer. Please welcome Ed Bose. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and knowing that I was going to be the last person speaking, uh, I thought around about it, and I wanted to think, and I wanted to talk about, first of all, I wanted to say that this past uh, semester and last weekend, looking at the shows, uh, it was amazing how sophisticated, and it was amazing the content and the work that you are doing. And I'm thinking about the future. A uh, moving uh, image has a language, and has languages that are changing and expanding. I believe the work you have made is part of the change and expansion and opportunity. This evolution, ide this evolution combines ideas, feelings, pictures, observations, data, stories, agreements, words, music, beauty, pain and a whole world of other things that we are just beginning to know well and just beginning to know how to describe them. Uh, the projects that, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and the evaluation uh, appears in the places, I'm sorry, and the evolution also appears in new places that are ref ref refreshing the ways we explore and study and learn and how we think and how we communicate and how we have conversation. The projects that you will be making, some of them will be big and expensive in addressing a large audience and equally can, can be you, a young person, posting his or her latest mo mo movie and their latest idea. Cocteau said that cinema would be greater art when its tools were available uh, as much as pencils and papers. These tools are now likely in your bag and pocket. Keep doing it. You can keep doing it. We need you to do it. And here are the honorees for Outstanding Film. The honorees for Outstanding Film are Theo Lassord, how long can you hold your breath? You know what? Fuck this. Sun Wu Park, Wu Minghua. Hey, you wait up! You don't want me to eat? No, I'm going to eat for my kids. Let me help you. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. Today's meal is very good. They will definitely like it. There are hot sauce, there are chicken, there are fish. Don't say it, don't use it. Ignacio Garcia Fry, El Pescador. Todavía nada. Nada. Ya agarraremos un merlín gigante. Pronto. Vas a ver. Ki Da Kim, sink deep. And the award goes to, oops. Theo Lassord, for how long can you keep holding your breath?
Wow, thank you. Um, I have a few notes, but just I can improv actually. I would like to thank all the teachers, SVA and the jury. Um, George, Chris, Marley, Ed, you've all helped me and guided me through SVA. Um, I would really like to thank my parents uh, for giving me the privilege to tell stories and giving me this time and being my toughest critic. Uh, they're a real mirror of my work, which is hard sometimes. Um, I would like to thank Sydney, who was here for, from day one, and really, uh, she was there since the, the entire journey of the film. I'd like to thank Charles, my creative partner, my duo is everything. Um, he was there in the editing room until 3 a.m., um, always there when I didn't need him. And the last thing I wanted to say is that when I began writing the story, and Marilee really was really the one pushing me to tell the story, and I was too scared to, uh, to tell it, the, um, I realized I was very naive, naive to what was happening to women. And I have three sisters, and in some, one, one friend published an article on sexual assault, and I realized I was there and I'd seen everything. And I started asking friends and women around me, that ever encountered sexual harassment or in sexual assault. And I realized almost every woman, and it was part of the world. But in the world of men, it was a taboo subject. And I realized it was a, and that was before Weinstein uh, story. And that's when I realized I wanted to participate and continue this dialogue of our role as a society to uh, say something. And the last thing I would like to say is, and it seems easy, but can, it requires a lot of courage. And it's, it's just to stand up and speak up. Thank you. And now, Mary Lou Grisante. Just two little things, right? Um, this year, we have many honorees, and we wanted all of the honorees to get a Dusty Award, a statue. So I'm going to invite all of the honorees, outstanding, if you were honored for anything, come on up. There's an award up here, and we'd like to have your picture, OK? And then I would like to invite absolutely everyone out into the theater to have a party. So please come up and have pictures, all of you wonderful, amazing, talented people. <laughs>